Welcome back, singers. Here we go. We are live. When you come in, like and say hello. We're shuffling here. I'm going to see what energy is in the room. My cards miss me. I haven't seen them in months. <laughs> we have a lot to talk about. I'm going to stay focused. And I'm going to be answering your questions, a few questions that I thought was worthy of talking about. And um, we're going to talk about the lessons in these questions, self-esteem, guys. How are you? Thank you, love. Hi. Come in and like as you come in. Hey, y'all. Let me read some of this energy. We got all the water signs in the house Pisces, Cancer, and the Stingles. Hey. We got some Uranus, some Aquarians in here, Aquarian energy. I have a lot of uh, Iranian energy, <laughs> so that's probably me. Hey. We got Earth signs, Taurus, Cappy, and Virgo in the house. Saturn, Capricorn energy. And traditionally, uh, Aquarius, right? We got Jupiter, Sag, and traditionally Pisces. Of course, that's going to change midway as people come in. Hi. All right, guys. Nice to see you. I don't know. I don't have a schedule for lives. Um, just yet, but you guys know I'm living the hustle free life now. <laughs> Doesn't mean I'm not working. I mean, I'm, I'm working for sure. I'm working on my fifth book and, um, it's exciting because it literally has nothing to do with astrology. <laughs> I, I think subconsciously I started another company. We'll see how that goes, but it's fabulous. And, um, I've been working on that all day. And then before I go to bed, of course, I'm working on my craft, astrology. Ah! Thank you, Darcy. I appreciate you. <laughs> working on calculations and all sorts of, I mean, like, goodness. And if you haven't worked on that stuff in a while, you're just like, oh, this is, um, you know, gets hectic. So I'm definitely working, but I'm not up. My bedtime, honey, is 10 p.m. And I've been getting to bed at 9.45. But 10 p.m. is it. Off to sleep. Do my affirmations. Do all of my journaling. I do um, my meditation practice in the morning and at night. <laughs> People wonder why I am not um, confined to a mental institution or I don't have these horrible vices. It's because 24 seven, I'm putting more work into myself than I am anything else. And, you know, even though I can produce books and I'm still working on my first documentary, I still put more work into myself. Ooh, and that is gonna lead me into these questions that you guys um, had under a few of my videos. Let me see which one I'm going to start with. <laughs> I love this. I love this. And there's a lot to be said when you guys make comments, when you ask me questions, many of the time you answer your own question while you're writing the question. And this is something 
that I implore you guys do. And this is something that I've done for a long time. And I talk about this in one of my books, <laughs> Probably Rise from the Ashes, um, about self-confrontation. And I know confrontation is a little bit of a, a strong word. It, it does um, have a little intensity to it because uh, people assume that there's going to be an argument or a fight. But if you get into the mirror before, before you send an email, before you ask a question, before you make a comment on someone's platform, I implore you to stand in the mirror, especially if it's a personal question, like, oh my gosh, is this guy going to call me back? Or I get albums, <laughs> you know, I get like dictionaries worth of words of people breaking down questions about a situation that they had that was unsavory. Oh my gosh, I met this guy. We slept together, blah, blah, blah. I want you to, before you put that in, um, in an email to me or under my video to sit with yourself in front of a mirror and you, you read out aloud what you're going to send me, read it aloud to yourself, tell yourself these things that you have done and ask yourself, what should I do? Many of you will not have the balls to do that, but I implore, implore you to do it. Listen to this under my video title are Scorpio men crazy. I have to put that in quotations. If you've read my book, I'm not crazy. You know why manipulative cheaters, an individual, and you're probably here. And if you are, I'm happy that you're here. Responded to that and said, I just had my first two month encounter with my first Scorpio man. The honeymoon stage was amazing, but I kept finding little lies. So that's not even the rest of the question, but right off the bat, I kept finding in the English language, <laughs> that means continuous. That means you found it before. You found one lie at one point. You found another one at another point. You found another one. So this is why I love self-confrontation. And I, I confront myself with lots of things. Like sometimes I'll get a feeling of like, an envious feeling of something. And I'm like, Oh, wait a minute. What's going, what's going on with that? You know what I mean? Like self-confrontation is great for a lot of things that you need to like really iron out with yourself. You really have to, but you have to be willing to dive in deep and kind of pull out these tiny little feelings that you're having or, you know, um, feelings of, um, you know, when you're wanting to cut someone off or when you're saying, Ooh, why am I feeling that way? Something's going on. You need to sit down and have that conversation with yourself. You know, sometimes it's challenging. Um, sometimes you want to avoid it, <laughs> but the mirror is your best friend. So this person is telling me that I kept, she kept finding lies. So she's already excused the first lie. She's already excused the second lie. And now here's another damn lie. Valentine's Day 2023, after a Bruno Mars concert, I decided to go through his phone and find more lies. Are we surprised? You don't need to go through anybody's phone to find any lies because you already saw a lie a long time ago and you dismissed that. You saw another one, you dismissed that too. So now you want to go through their phone and hurt yourself even more by discovering all the things that you saw before, <laughs> you know, it's like, it's like me going in the refrigerator and the refrigerator is empty and I shut the door. But an hour later, I go back in that refrigerator looking for food. Now there wasn't any food in the refrigerator an hour ago. So how would, how would food get in the refrigerator now? <laughs> Every time I check, it's going to be empty. It's confirmed. I already saw it. I saw it an hour ago. So now I'm disappointed that there's no food in the freaking refrigerator. Right? I miss him. Best connection ever. Listen to this. And a lot of you guys, I don't want you to make fun of this person. It's, that's not my point of, of, of bringing up these conversations. I want you guys to break these things down yourself. 
and listen to you. And this is why I say journaling and when you journal, when you write, and as a, as a professional writer and someone who studied writing in college, as someone who's been writing since she was five, I write aloud because I need to hear those words. I need to hear what my voice sounds like stringing a sentence together. I need to hear the energy of those words. When you start speaking things, sometimes you'll feel funny saying it. And there's a reason behind that. Some things come with ease. Some things are very challenging to get out of your throat. <laughs> and there's a reason for that. And so when you speak to yourself in the mirror and you look yourself in the eyes and you say, I keep finding lies in this individual. And I looked through their phone and I found more lies. And then you say, I miss him. Something sounds a little off. You're with someone who's been lying the whole entire time. You look through the phone because you want to hurt yourself even more. You want to inflict yourself with some more pain. But you miss all of the lies and the pain. There's something really wrong with that, guys. And then she says that this was the best connection ever. How on earth did you have a, the best connection ever with someone who's a liar? Many times. It's just a, a habitual liar. What did you connect? It wasn't your heart. It wasn't your spirit. What connected with the lies? Oh, now here's the question. Is this what love feels like? How I felt with him. Is this what love, love feels like? But it seems like Scorpio men are all players. This is a loaded, loaded commentary. Are you listening? Someone who has been lied to multiple times has deceived themselves, very, very Neptunian Pisces energy, into believing that a liar is the best connection that they ever had. And they're asking me, is this what love feels like? No. That is not what love feels like. It is not. You know what love feels like? After the first lie, you're so triggered and you're like, oh my gosh, this is not who I am. I cannot continue a relationship with you because you are a liar. Please go away. Self-love, <laughs> that's what love feels like. It feels like feeling worthy enough to only only allow someone one ch one chance to screw up in the way that they did and feel worthy enough to leave without any residual questions or feelings or talking about I need closure oh no 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 that's just not that's not me it's not you don't accept that you don't open the door to lies and cheating being lied on and 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 whatever else happened is not a connection it's delusion it's a delusion. And many of you guys, and I know this because over the years, you've had similar comments. Oh, I miss him. You miss like four years of fighting, getting cussed out, getting left with a whole bunch of kids. Getting what, what, do you, what do you miss about that? What do you miss about that? That's something you're accustomed to, probably. That's something you expect for yourself, probably. This is what I talk about consistently, about breaking yourself down, breaking this demeanor down of a person who doesn't even feel worthy of, of having someone truthful in their life, of someone who mistakes love and care for a liar. This whole inner 
delusion needs to be broken down. And it began a long time ago. Maybe this person saw dad acting like that. And it was like, oh, that's what men do. They lie. It's okay. I love him. Whatever that means, because clearly they've never they've never had any self-fulfillment, any self-love to experience feeling value and worth of honesty and loyalty. And so you go way, way back. And this is where it began, where the self-worth at some point was chipped away and you begin to expect being lied and cheated on. It's something kind of normal, like, eh, that's what they do, right? You don't feel any worth. And you confuse that and you grab the word love. I don't know why. There's so many other words that you can grab. You grab that word and you put it in the spot of, I don't, I don't know what this is. Best connection ever. Is this what love feels like? No. Not at all. Not even, not in a long shot. Not in a long shot. So, this is a mirror moment, guys. And this is for any of you who've ever had something similar. You're going back and forth with somebody. Somebody's like, I'm so confused. What are you confused about? What can you be confused about? When someone is not responding to you, somebody's disrespecting you, what is the confusion? They don't, they don't want you. <laughs> it's like, there's literally like, I, I'm so practical in my relationships, very practical. I have never been delusional about a relationship. I'm very real. Even going back my whole life, never been delusional about it. I know when someone is disrespecting me, very clear on that, very clear on it. Um, I've never confused love with disrespect. I know the difference. It's your choice to just sit in the mess and make excuses. Is this, it seems like Scorpio men are players. No, it has nothing to do with Scorpio men. It has something to do with you not feeling worthy enough to be with someone who's truthful and loyal. That's what it's all about. It has nothing to do with them because they're going to do what they do anyway. This guy been lying. This guy been cheating. But why are you there? That's my. That's always my question. Why are you there? The blame game doesn't work. It doesn't work. You need to break this person down. And who is this person? The person who is open and susceptible to liars and cheaters. The person who's been open to them. He's not the first one and he ain't going to be the last one. The next man going to be a clone of that clone of that is that guy because you're the same. You need to pulverize the individual that you are right now. And that means your beliefs around love, your beliefs around your worthiness, your beliefs around relationships. All of that has got to go. It's got to go. You got to start fresh from the ground up because if you have a straw house, anybody could come in and tamper with you. Anyone can. Um, if you're not on my Instagram, I don't know why you're not because I post things and I have stories and they're usually self-esteem lessons. Sometimes they're not. Sometimes they're things, you know, I post stuff that I'm doing that I want to share with you guys. But I posted something today um, or, or yesterday. I don't remember now. But it's a clip of a Whoopi Goldberg interview with Joan Rivers. And Joan is talking about beauty and this, that, and the other. <laughs> and, of course, she didn't know who she was dealing with because um, if you watch any of Whoopi Goldberg's interviews go way, way back, you know, to the 90s, you, she had a point where she – you know, develop very, very strong self-esteem. And in the interview, you know, Joan is like, wouldn't you want to be thin and beautiful? And she was like, honey, I, 
am. You know, and there was nothing Joan could say to interrupt how she felt about herself, regardless of what other people are talking about. And this is what I mean. And so the old version of you who believes you're unworthy, who believes all oh, men are cheaters, who believe who has this stupid rhetoric to cover up the fact that you're the one who's broken and you're the one who's inviting them in. How did he get into your life? How did he how how did you even attract him? How did you start dating? How did you you inv you opened the door? Men don't just jump into your laps. This is an inside job. This is an inside job. You got to go back to the basics and see what the issues are. You know, um, at nighttime, I, I do a lot of calculations and I go back to the basics with astrology because I like to be very strong in my craft. I like to be a very strong writer. I like to be very strong in what I do. And... Um, there was some calculations that were just like two minutes off. And I, I just couldn't accept that. And I said, we got to keep going back. And I had to keep going back to find out where those errors were. Where were they? Why wasn't the numbers coming out correctly? And I finally did after an hour and a half or whatever it took. But it doesn't matter how long it takes for you to break yourself down. You got to pulverize all the things that bring in People who lie, people who cheat, people who always want to hurt you. There's a problem. Now, here is another question that I found interesting. And I did a live stream the other day. Um, called when low self-esteem makes you do stupid like this, right? And we talked about someone who was dating a married man who had a question for me. Already they started off wrong. <laughs> they want a relationship with somebody who has jurisdiction legally over another. Anyway, under that video, a fellow stinger has a question for me. And they said, I need to ask a serious question um, Scorpios were supposed to be the sexiest sign of the Zodiac. So why don't I get any more women than the average Zodiac sign? In fact, I struggle a lot picking up women. And then they said, I, I'm not saying, you know, that I need anybody. I'm quite independent and I like being alone. They just wanted to ask this question. So right in the question, we have some, pro we have some problems. <laughs> Thank you, water guard. Right within the question, we have some issues here. And what are those issues? <sighs> so here we have a person who assumes, <laughs> um, saying that, I why don't I get any more women than the average zodiac sign? First of all, how, you don't know what the average zodiac sign gets. You don't know what other people are getting. You don't know, you don't know who's getting what. Okay, relationship wise. Nowadays, people are just liars and full of crap when they talk about what they have and who they're with and things like that. You don't know what sign has what. Okay. In fact, right now, a lot of men, you know, are in cells, sitting at home in the basement, you know, touching themselves. They're not getting dates, they're not going outside. People are, you know, into themselves right now. There's a lot of reasons why you're not getting someone. However, if this is your story, guys, whatever you say about yourself is, is reality. You know, it's like me writing a sad book and reading it and saying, why is it sad? Well, it's my story. I wrote it sad. Okay. You can write your life story any way that you want to. So if your story is that you're not getting any more women than the average guy, then you're not getting any more women than the average guy. And also, if you're using the word struggle, woof, if you're saying you struggle to get women, you're going to struggle to get women. And if your mindset is that I like being alone, honey, that's why women, ain't, they, they don't want you. You like going and be alone then. Already, the whole conversation is negative. How you feel about yourself, how you see yourself compared to other people, the story that you're constantly telling. 
I'm struggling. No one would want me. Blah, blah, blah. Look, if that's the movie you're directing, honey, then you'll have a movie. And at the end of that movie, you don't have no damn woman and you're struggling. You are who you say you are. And that is why I wrote Rise from the Ashes. For those of you who read it or listened to it, you already know why I talk about language, why it's so important. And the things you say every day, the things you say to yourself, the story that you've convinced yourself, you know, that you're struggling. Oh, honey, go ahead and struggle. I'm not struggling. My life is easy. I have the easy life. And I don't struggle to meet men at all. <laughs> at all. At all. Other people have their little stories saying, oh, my gosh, this, that, and the other, and I can't do this. Okay, honey, that work can't. Already we got a problem with that. And that is them, and that is not me, and I don't want to hear it. You know, when women say men ain't shit, ooh, I get away from them. <laughs> that is your story, and please leave it over there, okay? Leave it over there. And here's another person right under that saying, I feel so stupid on sites, like dating sites, I guess. They're saying I get no results and I pray to meet weird people. Um, or I pray to meet weird people and they say, people always try to use me. I'm too nice. I, I give and never receive. Maybe it's me. No, it is you. There's no maybe right there in that short three sentence. Okay. You want to meet weird people, okay? People always try and use you, okay? You're too nice. Okay, well, stop. <laughs> I give and never receive. Stop damn giving. You know, already, see, these are these are the things you need to talk to yourself about in the mirror. These are things you need to have a conversation. Why are you telling me that? Tell yourself. Look in the mirror and say, why are people always trying to use me? I'm too nice. I'm giving too much. What's the reason behind your giving? Are you giving because that's naturally who you are? Or are you giving as a form of control? As you Are you giving as a form of um, codependency? Like you want the people to be dependent upon you? Like here, I, I, I'm the only one who has this. Don't you need me? You know, that's also another issue. You got to ask yourself, the, there's so many things, guys, and you're avoiding it. All these things run really, really, really deep. You know, I'm a giver as well, but I give only what I can afford to give. I'm not going to be in a poor house for nobody else. You will not get my last. You will not get my last no matter what it is. And I only do enough to where it doesn't infringe on my life. As soon as I'm start, starting to feel some pain and you're messing up my time and I you messing up my sleep and you messing up my schedule and you, I can't write or I can't excel. But, oh, nope, nope. Done. Malika disappears. Where has she been? Out of here. No. I give and I don't, I don't expect for you to give me that. If I give to you, I gave that to you. I had enough to give to you. I had more than enough. You got, you got the crumbs when I give. Just know that I didn't have to go into all these other things and I don't have to spend 10 years recuperating. No, 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 I'm, I'm good. I'm giving you because I know I have enough. Okay. You have to care about yourself enough to build the nice gate around yourself. Like I said, things that are valuable always have security. You don't see $10 million homes with no security, no gates, no guards, honey, no. You, you can't even go into uh, the CVS or the drugstore and 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 grab any item you want. Some of those items, and I look at the price, some cheap ass items, honey, $12.99 be behind behind a gate and you got to get a damn key. Those have more values than the, the $2.99 items. They, they, get, they put security there. There's a security guard at the door. There's cameras. Come on, man. What are you doing with yourself? You have no protection. People could just come in and out and steal and take and use you. And, and what? And what? Of course it's you. Of course it is. Of course it is. Of course it is. Of course it's you. 
Listen to your words. Listen to my words. Listen to how I describe myself. Here's another question. <laughs> how do I get a Scorpio back into a relationship? This is a video I made a long time ago, how to, how to get a Scorpio back. I also have a crash course on that topic in case the, the young lady who wrote this is watching. What are all the things we can do? I don't know who we is. <laughs> Uh, for gaining Scorpio's trust and interest and liking towards us. How to convince a Scorpio to come back into a relationship. Goodness. As a sun and moon Scorpio, and I've spoken about this before. First of all, the Scorpio already been watching you for a long time. They already, they already know. See, the thing about us that other people don't, quite get or they get it but but then when they get into the relationship they forget it that happens a lot i think a lot of people they know you know beforehand but when they get in they either think they're all the way in and they can slide through the cracks and they can do things and say things and we will overlook it we're always looking we're one of the most or perceptive um attentive signs of all um, the most calculated. We're always, we never show our face though, like other people. Other people are like, oh, I'm gonna call you out. And I notice this. No, 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 no. There's no need for that. We go by energy. So we already, we already know what the hell is going on. We got it all. Every time you do something, say something, we put it all into little categories and we got the whole story right there. We like, I got you. I know who you are. I know who you are. Meanwhile, you don't even get it. You're just frolicking around, thinking you're getting over, thinking, I don't know what you're thinking, but we already know we're, we're watching all of your things. So when you start talking about trust, trust is proven. Trust is earned. And so if you're the type of individual who's always running your damn mouth and talking so much, none of that makes a difference because words don't teach, right? With me, I know how valuable I am to individuals. I understand that I bring so much value that um, I understand the, 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 the immense amount of value that I bring to other individuals. Let's start there for a second. And so when I leave a relationship, it's not just me that's leaving. It's everything that I've done, everything that I've brought, everything that 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 I have imprinted upon that individual or those individuals. Okay, it's everything. So when you're in a relationship with Scorpio, we're we're already watching everything that you're doing. You're you're earning trust. You're earning this over a period of time. OK, you're earning it through actions, through follow through, through proving how loyal you are or whatever it is that they that particular Scorpio is seeking, whatever they're they're seeking. They're watching to see if all of your actions match up. They're not really listening to you because we don't like a bunch of talking and we're, we don't trust that anyway. So. We just like to watch your behavior. I'm going to give you an example. I have a relative who is older than I am. Well, everybody's older than I am. <laughs> that doesn't really say anything. I'm the youngest. But this person being an air sign, they love a lot of words. They love words. And they're not particularly a great speaker. They're, they they don't articulate themselves very well, <laughs> but they love to talk. And for 47 years of my life, I have observed them very, very well. And they're very consistent. They're a consistent liar. They're consistent in not following through. You cannot trust them at all. Anything they say is not to be trusted. They'll never come through, ever, ever, ever. They've never come through for anything. And despite that, they love to say that they're honest. 
that they're trustworthy. I don't know where they get this from. I don't know where they get this from. But over 47 years, they've proven I would, ne I would never trust this person with anything, with anything at all. Even if you said, call me back in five minutes and you put that timer on, they would not call you back in five minutes. They would call you back probably a month later and say, oh my gosh, I forgot. They're very consistent with their behavior in the fact that I know, I've know i known who they were forever, okay? And so when you talk about gaining a Scorpio's trust, I don't trust this person at all, and I never have, and I never will. And that means with anything, with the smallest thing, I don't trust them. And they're not the only ones that I don't trust. They're not the only ones. But I will say this, they have proven disloyalty over my whole entire life. And for you to say, how, what are the things that I can do to make them trust me, to make, you know, to, to, to have, have them, um, you know, believe me, to have them come back to convince them. The convincing is not in your words. The convincing is, is in the whole entire time that they've been watching you, which is the reason they do not trust you to begin with. And I don't know why this is challenging for many people to understand that. And I think this individual that I'm speaking about, if someone said to them, oh, Malika doesn't trust you, they'd be like, oh, I'm so surprised. You know, <laughs> How can I get her to trust me? Oh, oh, so we're going to erase 47 years worth of disloyal behavior. And it only takes one time. This is, this is the blockage that you guys have. It only takes that one time for me to be like, oh, I believe you. I believe you. I do. And I'm not saying that if someone doesn't follow through one time, that's it. But I'm, oh, but best believe, <laughs> best believe I'm not going to dismiss that. I'm not going to dismiss that, especially if it's in the beginning. Especially if it's in the beginning. Mm-mm. I'm not going to dismiss it and be like, oh, no, 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 no. I'm going to say, oh, this happened, this happened. In fact, in my journals, I usually write things down. I've journal, journaled since the 90s, and I used to write everything everyone did to me down. Just write it, just write it down. Just write it down. Oh, someone so did said this today. It was interesting, the tone of their voice. And I just want to watch this behavior to see if it repeats itself. I just want to watch that. You know what I mean? It's kind of like dealing with a child who maybe has an outburst one day and you say, ah, eh, that might be their behavior, but let me keep an eye on it and make sure, because if they continuously keep doing this, it might be the result of something. So I need to look at it or, or your pet or whatever. I, I, I'm like that. Maybe other people aren't, but I'm always on it. I'm always on it. Not the words. Not the words, the behavior, the behavior. And so how can you convince? I don't know that I would use the word convince. I don't like it in this context. Ooh, this damn chair. I don't like it in this context. Um, I, 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 I probably would use the word prove and proving is something that you need to do and not say, okay? And even if they did disregard a couple of things, it's still on the back burner. They still got it there on the shelf. Like, mm, this person is capable of this. Some people, you know, are are capable of things and some people aren't. Like, I'm, I'm not, like, I don't tell lies. I think that I'm more of a, a of, of, uh, I'm more clever than that <laughs> in my language skills that if I didn't want to share something, I can pull strings of words together to say where it wasn't a flat out lie or a lie of any sort. I think I, I think I, I'm very good. I have very good pickup and I can shift my way in and out. You know what I mean, guys? So I'm telling a lie, that's not my thing. It's just not my thing. I'm not going to lie for you. I'm not going to lie for anyone else. Not even the small lies. Like, I don't, I don't like it. I don't like 
oh, I was busy, so I couldn't pick up. No, I wasn't busy. I just didn't pick up the damn phone. And I, you don't need to know why. I didn't pick it up. You're on the phone now. What do you want? Don't waste time asking about other stuff. I'm here now. What do you want? I'm I'm really more, a little bit more forward like that, I think, in my conversations. And people know that about me. And so um, I don't, I don't lie. Like, I don't, I don't care also enough to lie to protect someone. I don't care. <laughs> like, I, I couldn't care less. <laughs> I don't lie to protect you. Like, for what? Like, I don't care about how you feel. Like, I, I don't, I don't care enough to do that. And so, um, my point is, <laughs> you know, the character of an individual, right? So, When you're in a relationship with a Scorpio, let me just back up. We watch your character really intensely because trust has to be earned. You have to earn your way in, just like you do anywhere else, just like applying to a college, just like applying to a job. You don't just get, you have to earn your way in, okay? And once you get in there, just like a job. Some people, you know, they show up on time every day the first month and then they get a little sloppy and then they're late. And then they're, you know, this happens in relationships as well. You get in and you're like, oh, I got a Scorpio boyfriend now. And you start running your effing mouth and you start getting very sloppy and you start um, probing. You think You think that you're a permanent spot and we're watching you. And we are calculating everything that you're doing. And we're building your character. We're saying, mm, would this person do that? What are they capable of? People know that Malika is not a liar. Period. It's my character. I've always been that way. Always. Even when I did things as a little girl. My parents were like, did you do this? I was like, yep. I got that ass whooping, honey. I always paid the piper. You know what I'm saying? Whatever it was, I I I did the punishment. I did the, I got my butt whooped. I did, you know what I mean? Where other people lie and say, no, I did it. I did it. What? You know what I'm saying? Like, that's, that's me. Who did this? I did. Why? You know what I mean? And so... We look at the character of the individual and see what the capability is. If anybody knows anything else, they'll be like, well, at least Malika's not a liar. <laughs> you know what I mean? At least she's not a liar. At least she's not a liar. Um, but when you start doing things and saying things, and then you're like, oh, how can I get him back? Like, we know that you're capable of, of being a liar or you're capable... I know what my relative is capable of over a, a, a span of 47 years of this person just, just being, um, I don't even know how they can look in the mirror really with the things that they do and the things that they say. I know the extent of their capabilities of their character is, and I wouldn't be surprised when people say things, oh, they did this. I'm not surprised. I've seen it. I've seen it. And so once you prove with your actions, your character, whatever that may be, and then you want to know how you can come back as if that erases your character, as if that erases your capabilities. Oh my gosh, give me another chance. Someone said that to me. I remember and I, and I told you guys about this. They, they did something twice. First time I said, mm, okay. And I actually paused before I said that. They were like, oh, I'm so sorry, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, hmm. I was like, all right. Okay. And I kept that here. And I was like, they're capable of this shit right here. So I'm not three strikes, you're out. 
I'm a, I'm a different baseball game. So then they did it again. Nope. Oh, we're not doing that. And they were like, and I was like, well, well, what would you do if you were me? I asked that. I said, you've done this before. What would you do in my position? And they said, I would give me another chance. I said, another chance to do what? The same thing? Mm -mm. See, I, I'm a person who has self-value, though. If you don't have self-worth, you would allow this again and again, like the, the young lady who saw the lies. But me, I said, oh, no. I opt out. I already know what you're capable of. And once you repeat it, I choose to go away. Okay, guys? So you can't convince a Scorpio to do a damn thing. The only thing I, I would say is that if you're going to convince somebody, convince us in the beginning. Convince us in the beginning, honey. Convince us the first couple of years so that I say, ah, this person has, has a track record of doing this. You know, when it comes down to it, guys, all we have is our reputation. And I'm talking very Capricorn here because Capricorn is the 10th house. 10th house is your reputation. It's your legacy. It's how people will remember you. When you die, what will you be known for? That's that whole 10th house, guys. And once your reputation is ruined, you're the liar. You're the cheater. You're the snake. You're the late person. You're the very challenging to bounce back from that. It is very challenging. Why? Because people have years and years of, uh, you know, a track record with you. And you can't just say, ah, how, can I, how can I come back? How can I come back? And if somebody's coming back, if there's a Scorpio coming back, it's for them to decide. To, to come back for whatever reason. We already got many videos on why we would come back. <laughs> but it's not really not up to you. It's not up to you guys. And that's and that's as deep as I can get with that conversation. And I know there's a lot of little videos around YouTube, non-Scorpios talking about what they know about us, which I'm so intrigued by because they don't have our brain. They don't have our characteristics. They don't have anything, but they know so well how to convince me to let you back in. Like I caught Alzheimer's and I forgot all of your past, darling. No. Hang on a second. My chair is heated and my heat came off. <laughs> I'm trying to click the button with my foot. All right. So guys, I hope that I've given you a couple of self-esteem lessons. And every time you ask questions and put, put comments, you know, I really want you to get in that mirror and ask yourself. Say it to yourself aloud. When you hear those words come out your mouth, ooh. When you hear yourself say that somebody cheated on you a million times and you still keep going back and you got to look into your look into your own eyes and have that conversation. Oh yes, that's part of the breakdown and rebuild. That is it. I've been doing it for over ten years. Nobody said it was easy. Nobody said it was easy. Listen to your language, how you talk about yourself. This young man says, I never get girls. That is that is the declaration he's making to the universe. And now you want me to teach you how to get girls? I want I don't want to teach you how to do that. I want to teach you how to break this down to the last element and rebuild it. Boom. And to someone who would never say something like that. Ever, in a million years because they know they're fabulous 
You know women are attracted to them. Okay, guys. This is what we got to do. It starts at square one. And some of you want to take shortcuts. You're like, how can I do this? How can I do that? I'm like, you got to break yourself down and rebuild. <laughs> They're like, how long is that going to take? Listen, honey. However long it needs to take. Because anything else that you acquire is going to be based on the mess that you have right now. Is that what you want? If you're in a messy situation, you're still going to track mess. It doesn't matter. You got to clean it up. You got to clean it up and rebuild someone, rebuild a person who will respect themselves, who's not looking through a guy's damn phone. I don't need to look through no man's phone ever, ever. If he left it open, I wouldn't even look. I wouldn't even be, I wouldn't even feel compelled to look in his phone. There's nothing in there I want to see. I know you got my number. I'm right over here. <laughs> I don't need to look at your phone. I don't need to wonder whether you're cheating on me. Are you kidding me? Royalty. Like, what do you, what's the conversation about? What are we talking about? That's for someone who's worried about themselves. They're not good enough. Oh my gosh, you might find someone else. Let me look through their phone. Go ahead and look through the phone and see 50 other numbers. You already expected that anyway. Because you didn't feel good about yourself anyway. Which is why you attracted someone who cheats anyway. It starts in the mirror. And I know all this stuff. He wasn't born like this. Guys. Come on. So I wrote four books. Dating Scorpio takes you all the way back. I think I start... In college, guys, dating Scorpio. And I show you all the little intricate relationships that I had, whether that be intimate or working. And I show you what my mind was back then and how I navigated these things, what I had to pull out of my magical hat in order to survive, in order to get through this, in order to get through that. And you see the transformation through it. Dealing with every single sign of the Zodiac. Dealing with the, the Aries who wants to fight. Or dealing with the big mouth Sag. Or dealing with the clingy can't. What, whatever, guys. I show you that all in my book, Dating Scorpion. This is a lesson to show you how far I've come. Because none of this would happen today. Book number two is the, the, the Bible of Breakdown and Rebuild. I show you how I did it. And if you follow what I say in here, it's a 45 day transformation. I guarantee you, I'm not saying sometimes it works, sometimes it don't. No. A hundred percent of the time, <laughs> you will not be the same if you do what I tell you to do. And I know it's challenging for a lot of people. They're like, oh, well, I didn't get through this mirror part. Look. If you can't look yourself in the face, but you can look at somebody else's face, you have a problem. Book number three. I'm not crazy. We talk about language. I'm a language person. Okay. I'm a professional writer. For those of you who are new to my live and new to my channel, I'm a professional astrologer, which means I study at a real school. <laughs> And I am an author of four, soon to be five books. So I wrote I'm Not Crazy because that is one of the main words that people love to call Scorpios. And we, I take you back through language and how important it is for you guys to develop the correct language for yourself. When you speak, you speak your life into existence. If you're calling yourselves narcissists, crazy, and all that stuff is a joke just to fit in. Um, it's problematic. It becomes part of your subconscious. It's something you start to believe in, you know, you know, and I, and I show you how to choose correct language and, um, accept who you are. Cause a lot of people love to gaslight. We have a big chapter on that. Uh, and, um, how to 
start speaking about yourself in an empowering way. My fourth book, which is only on audio, is called Nobody Can Hurt Me, Scorpio's Guide to Healing with Affirmations, because affirmations are an intricate part of my development and my life. I All day, I do affirmations. All day. And some days are so challenging that I need to pull out more than I've ever, <laughs> ever imagined in my life. Um, I like to create an environment that is in concert with the life that I want to. I have affirmations everywhere, everywhere. I have affirmations on the walls, here, here. So whenever I open my eyes, boom. Whenever I open my eyes, boom. Everywhere I look, there's affirmations. There's affirmations on my bathroom. Uh, when, uh, when, bathroom window. My bathroom mirror, there's affirmations on my front door. So before I leave, boom. <laughs> Everywhere I go, there's affirmations, okay? And I'm heavy, heavy, heavy with it. And I'm heavy with saying it aloud, getting comfortable to speaking kind words to yourself and things that, that um, you want to bring into existence. So my whole book of Nobody Can Hurt Me, I take you back. I think we go back to four years old, honey. And I go deep into how I even developed poor self-esteem and worth how I had horrible language for myself or horrible thoughts about myself and how I had to break out of that. And it's not an easy thing to begin with because you already have deep rooted language about yourself that other people have developed first and you continued on. And so I, um, this book is amazing because you're going to listen and you're going to, you're going to repeat it after me. You're going to say it with me. You're you're supposed to, um, you know, be a part of the book. And I, and I ask you in the audio to repeat it after me because you need to hear the stuff aloud. You have to. You got to get, get yourself into the habit of speaking to yourself. You have to, guys. Very, very important. So a lot of people are like, how can I do this? How can I do that? My shop is open. I am back. I was on holiday for three months in the Caribbean. And you can buy the audiobooks, buy the paperback books. Those of you who did um, order, I believe yesterday, they're being shipped out in the morning. So I have a whole batch going out in the morning of whatever you bought from my shop. I have other things. By the way, um, I just announced that all of the sale items are an additional 40% off. Use the code spring sale and you'll see that on the website when you get there okay guys so i have i have things for you if you need references i have four books honey i've crashed courses if you want to do a one-on-one -on -one, a lot of you guys like personal live stream sessions where i can break everything down and i give you homework to do we're not just talking i'm telling you what you need to do the next step and you need to do it you need to listen you really really need to do it in order to move to the next level. It's not just like, oh my gosh, what do I do? Like there's a one word answer. You need to do homework. You need to really care about your self-development so that you're not attracting all of these things that are harmful to yourself. You keep hurting yourself with relationships. You keep hurting yourself with, you know, um, still working at the same old job 10 years and knowing you hate it and you you can't stand waking up or going to bed just thinking about going to that place this stuff is harmful guys it's harmful so we talk about whatever you want to talk about and i and i tell you what you need to do in order to eradicate it further um you can get a master chart reading you guys know that on the site i break down everything i break down career i break down love i give you birth dates of your karmic matches. I give you birth dates of your perfect matches. We talk about your, um, your superpowers and how to use them, how to use your whole chart to your advantage. We talk about your challenges and how to get through those. So it's a whole entire, like you shouldn't have any like leftover questions after a master chart reading. You really shouldn't. Um, if you want a tarot reading, I have that as well. And that one is great because you just send in a photograph or a text message from somebody and I will break it. The cards will break it all down. I mean, it's very, 
like that. <laughs> uh, what else is going on? So I don't have a schedule when I'm going to be doing lives. I guess when I feel like it, my life has have shifted. I've picked up some amazing habits when I was away, which is going to bed early, getting up early. I go to bed at 10 o'clock at the latest. I'm up at 6.30, 6.45 every morning. Um, that's when I train. You guys know I've been a long distance runner since I was 13. I do my long runs in the morning. I do hit classes. I do yoga, like a combination of a lot of things, weights. And then I, um, well, I do all my meditation and stuff before that. And then I exercise and then I get to work. I'm working on my fifth book. I'm uh, shooting a documentary. And so um, I've developed going to bed early, getting rid of the hustle life where I'm up 4 a.m. doing things like, you know, I'm getting older. That's not good for my health. It has nothing to do with where I want to go. I've gotten rid of all the people who are a part of that lifestyle. You know, who you hang around is who you become. Um, my father used to say this. I didn't know what he meant back in my 20s. And I really, truly understand it. A lot of you guys, you make excuses for your so-called friends. You've got whore friends. you got friends who are have bad vices. They're smoking, whether that's crack or cigarettes. I don't know what they're doing. You're like, well, at least it's not me. And it's like, if you're in that environment, it's going to affect you. And so I've rid myself of uh, be, even being a part of situations that are not in concert with the life that I want to have. And I implore you guys, get a, a clear vision of what you want to do. Some of you are middle-aged like me, and you need to get on it, like really get a direction of um, how you see yourself, what you envision so that you can clean out the clutter. If there's people still lingering to you, get rid of them and stop making excuses about, you knowing them since kindergarten, big deal. <laughs> you know, you had a great time in kindergarten, honey, you're old now. So who gives a damn? Um, and so, uh, anybody who's not a part of what I, my, my vision of my future going here forward, I had to push them out and I feel no kind of ways about it. You know, I, I, my health is number one. Um, I need to get to bed early. It's the best, best habit that I <laughs> acquired was getting in the damn bed by 10 o'clock and not being up worried about doing this and that. I have cleaned all that out. I do not care about it at all. And, um, you know, being, bringing people in, and this may change for you. You may bring somebody in and make two years later, your life changes. You go to another level, honey. So, you know, expect these changes to happen. And so just kind of being around individuals, and this means other, other aspects of your life too. You know, when you're scrolling on YouTube, you know, there was, there was a video that popped up and it was about somebody in their bad divorce. And I was like, oh honey, I'm not watching that. That is not, you know, I'm not interested in people with these really bad relationships. And I don't, I don't find any solace in, in engaging and stuff like that. So I put on a vegan recipe channel where they was making some cute little recipes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, unless I have something to bring to you guys as a lesson and it has a purpose and intention behind it, I'm not engaging with that sort of material. And I implore you to get rid of it, to stop watching these videos, stop watching clips, stop getting into conversations about men ain't shit and modern women ain't got this and stop. Like, especially if you're looking to get married or you want an amazing relationship with yourself or anyone else, like none of this stuff is helpful guys. It's not. Uh, and I think that's all I have to say. Let me scroll through. I don't know what is going on in this comment <laughs> section. I hope everybody is behaving themselves tonight. I'm glad you guys were able to make it. If it's your first time, welcome in. And um, I hope, I really, really do hope. Like every, every time, you know, I think about coming on YouTube and what I'm going to post. You know, I hope you guys are doing the work. I've been getting so many messages from so many people that are saying that my books are really helpful, that they've started the process. And after a year, they've cut people off. They, they're doing better. They're getting the job they want. They're in happy relationships. That's so fabulous. And just to understand that it starts 
with yourself and not the other person. Waiting for them to act right, waiting for them to get treatment. Are you kidding me? <laughs> what a joke. Is this a joke? It's a joke. All right, guys. And, and what you say is what it is, honey. I want you to read your comments and read them aloud. And if you got words like can't, struggle, and all this and that, you got you to gotta do something else. You got to do something else. My life is not struggle. I have the easy life, honey. Things come to me easily. And um, things come to me easily, guys. <laughs> I love the conversation that's going on in here. I'm not even going to talk, but you guys can read through this. Um, <laughs> All right, guys, I um, I need to go to bed, Hopefully, get ready for bed. So I'll see you at ScorpioSunScorpioMoon.com. Like, subscribe, share this video to someone you think will need it. I'm going to start doing some shorts, uh, which I think is going to be fun because sometimes I just have a few things to say. And so you're going to see me uploading some uh shorts on um youtube i'm gonna be at scorpio sun scorpio moon podcast there's so many uh, murders going on and um it's a shame but if i can calculate what happened and and so forth uh, i think that would be helpful so i'm gonna be at on my podcast channel also no makeup needed um, I'm going to be there sharing more about my diet and, um, how I'm able to be 47 with a 25 inch waist <laughs> and people get so upset with me. Not a lot, but a few people get very upset. They're not upset at me. They're upset at themselves for not having great health, but we're going to talk more about health. And, um, as you get older, you should have a health plan. You should not just be eating any old thing. And, and hoping for the best, honey, because <laughs> hoping for the best is not, not going to happen. Okay. You're going, you're going to be sick and going to attract this ease. So I'm going to talk about that on, um, no makeup needed soon. All right, guys, I'm out of here and I'll see you soon. Aww. <laughs>